Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello, one, two. <laughs> hello. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. And uh, I had a, a disaster uh, the week before last. Um, I was out playing, and uh, on the Friday night, I got the gig over, everything was fine. And then I had a gig on the Saturday night. I went out to the gig on Saturday night, went to start up my trusty old tires too. And uh, what, what happens, it starts up, and then no light flashes here for the hair drive, and my hair drive uh, doesn't connect, and my hair drive went down. And I use registrations on the memory buttons here and so on, and it calls up everything, so it pulls all my show together, and I had it all on the hair drive. And uh, there's a spinning hair drive, and the old IDE uh, drives. Now, my background is in computers opening all this kind of stuff, building computers for years and dealing with all that hair drive stuff and uh, so the hair drive went down anyhow so I was uh, not stuck and this is what I wanted to talk about if you're out live playing and your instrument goes down or your piece of equipment goes down what is your backup plan? So. My backup plan is two trusty iPads. An iPad 2 and an iPad 3. You don't have to have expensive stuff. And particularly if you're out on the road, you can batter those around. They take a lot of abuse, um, even though I don't. I look after them. And I'm you're running backtrack on these. And um, I have all my audio files. A lot, most of it is made off the keyboard. And a lot of what I record myself on, and I've made tracks on here uh, as, as a copy of this. But it's in audio stereo files, running off backtrack. And I put the lyrics on using iTunes, and I have videos on my channel showing how to do all this. So that's my backup. Now, <laughs> uh, um, so if my keyboard goes down, the hard drive goes down, I have my two iPads. So this is my iPad 2. Now, it's amazing how things can happen because the button on this broke as well and the button on this won't turn my iPad off. So my iPad 2 stays on, constantly stays on. So anyone out there knows how to turn an iPad 2 off if the power button is broke. Uh, would you please let me know in the comments is there any way of turning this off because I know if I can get it to go off somewhere using the software inside, you can get it to come on by plugging a cable in, and that'll be fine for me for the moment. But I don't want to go ripping it apart. So uh, then I went to my iPad 3, my second backup, which I have a repeat of what's on there on here. And uh, I switched it on, and uh, what did I decide to do? I'm greasy with a hello, uh, and it decided to. It was looking for Wi-Fi and everything to start setting up the whole iPad again. And I wonder if there's something to do with the um, Apple bug or security uh, thing that we're talking about during the week. Not sure, but it just decides um, I'm not starting for you tonight. <laughs> I'm going to reload all my software back on again and uh, that's it. So you can't be standing there in the middle of a venue trying to set up your iPad again. Uh, so I went back on my iPad 2 which was already running and uh, loaded up Backtrack and I had all my files there and I had access to the user in here so I had I had a, a lot of, a good few of my live instrumentals in particular which I play a lot of and uh, rock and roll and things like that, Johnny Be Good and so on. So um, I carry, of course, a. So I carry this thing with me, and I have made up this to fit on the tires too. It's like a, it's like a millennium uh, holder, and an, an aluminum thing, and I've connected it onto this stand, and it fits in here into the uh, what holds the speakers. So like that. So oh, hang on, I'll change there. So it fits in here like that, and then 
that just sits there and then you can uh, put your iPad on. So there I have my iPad and um, then you'd have this screen here would be probably up there two or three notches or four notches or whatever for your viewing angle. So um, uh, that's my uh, setup and that's my backup. So, uh, so we're going to take them off now. Just for now. So I want to know out there, uh, I want to know if you're out playing live in particular, what's your backup or what your, you know, what is your plan of action and what are you uh, going to do if your equipment happens to go down? Particularly if your main equipment goes down, what's your plan of action, your backup plan? So I'm using two iPads, which, are, which that works for me. I don't know what will work for you. Um, I couldn't really be carrying two tires, but uh, probably some people might bring two keyboards. I don't know, that might be an option. So um, if your hair driving these go down, then what can you do? Well, if you're on the gig, you could try switching it on and off a few times, and it might just pick it up. If it's completely gone, well, then you're, 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 you're shot. And if you've no backup, well, then or no way of running your show, well, then, then you're, you're going to lose your work. So um, it's very important to think about these things, particularly if you're a working live musician like I am. So uh, my background, of course, is in computers, IT and technology. I built hundreds of computers, or thousands of them, and uh, networks and all the rest of it. So uh, I know what I'm kind of doing when it comes to these kind of things, the dish stuff. Um, now, you can connect the tires up to the computer using one of these printer cables, or an AB cable is the proper name for it. It's got the square end on one side, the loaf of bread, and it's got the USB here on the other side, and you can plug that in here onto your computer and hold down the uh, music finder button. The music finder button here. You hold that down and then you press the arm button here. And you wait for the thing to start up and it'll create a link here onto your computer. And uh, you'll see on the screen and it'll tell you on the screen here. Um, and it'll be connected on here onto your computer. So it'll tell you on the screen that it's found a hair drive. Now when I done this, it said no hair drive was found, which means my hair drive seems to be completely shot. So I have ordered a few hair drives for this. And uh, the IDE hair drive, the, the old style hair drive, the, the ones with all the pins. And this keyboard came out in 2005, I think 2006. And um, the SSD and, and, and SATA and SSD was around then, uh, which there's no moving part. Yamaha, of course, could have moved in that direction. But they decided to stick with the old technology, and um, so we, we, we end up with this, and this is what we're stuck with. Um, it's running FAT32, which was, uh, which was used in Windows 95, Windows 98. Um, if anybody remembers that, um, some of you technical or computer wizards out there will know. 95, 98, uh, so you have to format this drive in here in FAT32, which means you have to do it in here really in the tires. So you have to format the drive in here in the tires for, for it to work. Uh, but that's when you're fitting the new drive. So what can we do? We're going to take now we're going to take the drive out. I'm going to show you how to remove the drive from your Tyrus keyboard. And I'm working on the Tyrus 2. So we're going to turn it around and uh, make sure that you have the power plugged out and everything plugged out. And make sure that you let your keyboard settle for a while so that all the static and everything has gone out of it. And then um, you need... Um, to put your board down on maybe towels. I'm using this. Uh, I'm using this stuff here that we use to protect 
equipment we were fixing it and computers and stuff. This is like a for me sort of uh, stuff. And um, we put something down to protect the front of your keyboard here. So I'm using that to protect my keyboard. So let's move that USB a bit. So let me see now, can I get a good view on this here now for you? That you can see here. Okay, so. So here we are on the back of the tiles. And here you've got a plate with hole with four screws and this whole, this is for your memory. So there can be extra memory added on in here on this. Now what we're interested in is over here, um, I might move this another bit. Let's see, can we get a better view on it? There now. Okay, I hope you can see that now. So there's a plate on here. And of course, it's, there's ventilation as well. The, the hard drive sits inside in here, and it's important as well not to block, completely block those ventilation slots. Uh, that's why you've got these uh, legs to keep it up off the ground so that air goes through. Now, if you're gigging, you'll have this on air, uh, probably on an X-stand or some sort of a stand, so it's fine. You need to remove four screws. So, um, I've got a... I've got one of these kits here. Um, it's not necessary at all now, uh, but it's just what I have. And uh, you need a Phillips head screwdriver or something like this. It needs to be the right size, and uh, because you don't want to retread the screws that's on. So the cross head screws. So we're going to take off the plate here first. So keep a hold of the screws while you're taking them off. And uh, make sure that they don't fall into the keyboard anywhere because um, you don't want to be fishing them out. And of course, don't lose them because we will need to fit the hard drive, the new hard drive, back in. Okay. Right, so remove the four screws. And then we need to lift the face plate here. Like that. So we'll just leave that there to one side. And now in here, you've got your hair drive and it sits in this sort of a caddy here that's holding it in place. And there's one screw here on the top, this side here, you'll see. And it's holding the hair drive in and the hair drive is connected with all the pins along here on this surface here. So we're going to remove this screw again, holding on to it and making sure you don't want it falling inside in here and uh, where you have to be trying to fish it out. That's the last thing you want. But I've done a lot of fishing in my day, but fishing for screws and keyboards is not something you want to be at. Uh, trust me, I've had my share of it. So. You have to slide the hair drive now down in that direction. So I'm just going to sit this just there behind it, just to keep it from getting too much of a bang. And then we just push gently on it, and there it goes. And then you're going to just remove it out. Now it's sitting here in this steel caddy thing that's holding it together. And uh, so here it is. We're going to take a look at this, see what it is. Um, it appears to be an 80 gig hair drive. That's kind of normal enough for putting those, and it's the one with all the, the pins here on it, as you can see. So it's an IDE drive, one of the old drives. Um, it's got the spinning disc inside, and you've got your laser pin that goes back and over, and it puts the laser beam on. So any sudden movement, or any movement while this is running, will it can cause it to crash, or just like a like a computer so it's not the best thing to have in a keyboard but that's what we're stuck with now there's four screws here holding this on the plate so we're going to remove them off next and uh, make sure you don't lose them either because we will need them to put this back on again afterwards so Right. 
So four of them there, one, two, three, four, four of them there, and then now this is our hair drive. So it's like a laptop hair drive, and it's the ID hair drive with all the pins. And uh, you need to make sure if you're buying one of these that you buy the right drive. And uh, so I have got a newer drive here. This is the 320 drive, and it's the newer connection. So this will not fit. That kind of a drive won't fit. It's a different sort of a drive. So uh, now the other thing is, uh, if you're buying a drive for this, um, the tires, as far as I know from what I've read and from what I know, it'll only take 127 gigs maximum. So you need to be looking for a hard drive up to 120 gigs, but I wouldn't go above 120 gigs. Um, and even if you need 120 gigs, 80 gigs was kind of a norm of what we put in them that time. But they will take, I believe, up to 127 gigs. So anything up to 120 gigs should be fine in it, but don't go above that. If you buy a drive above that, more than likely it won't recognize it and it won't work. So that's just a tip there on buying your drive. And um, I know you can buy SSD drives at the moment, they're very, pretty cheap. Those things, I had a look online, they're quite expensive because I suppose there's not that many of them around and people are looking for them and they're hard enough to get. So I have a few of them ordered. I, I think I have three on order at the moment. So um, I'm going to make a couple of backups as well. So that I might be able to replace a drive on the gig. So I, I just have to see how that works. So that, that's your drive. Now, um, before this keyboard, I had a, a, well now, first of all, just to show you what a backup might look like, uh, it'll be like this. So it'll be tires to backup. This is an earlier backup that I made. And, um, and not necessarily that it would look, this is my, all my files from over, I don't know how many years, back in 2005 or six. I'll be slobbing with all these different things. And um, we'll say, that's what a reg bank would look like. So I have a load of these where you would be saving songs and stuff, you know. Um, so that's kind of what, what, a, what a backup of the hair drive would look like. And in here you'd have just text files, there's all sorts of shows and there's all sorts of things set up and uh, it's all backed up here on this. Um, now the other thing is, um, Back in the day, before I had this keyboard actually, I was using um, a PSR 8000 and then I had a few of the other smaller keyboards in between before I moved up to the Tyrus 2. So this was the Yamaha PSR 8000 port to tone range when it came out in 98, whereas the Tyrus 2 came out in 2005-2006. This was a fabulous keyboard. Um, this Keyboard made more money for me, you wouldn't believe. A uh, fabulous keyboard for its time. Um, it even had sampling and everything on it, you know. Uh, you could fit a hard drive in it. Not a very big one, but uh, it was ahead of its time at the time, you know. Um, screen wasn't that great, but it read lyrics off MIDI files and everything. It done it all. And you could put the text files onto a style and uh, move them with a, a foot pedal. Very similar to the tires too. Uh, it had some great styles, some great old styles, um, disco and so on, and dance floor and Latin, uh, which I play a good bit of Latin, and ballroom and so on, and country. So a uh, great old keyboard that was in its time. That was the PSR 8000 technical data. So I think they only made the 9000 afterwards. Um, Actually, the vocal harmonizer on this <coughs> was really, really good, and I used it all the time. And uh, you could wire it in a way that you could take it out here to the headphone jack, and you could separate the vocal harmonizer. Um, that it wasn't meant to be done that way, but but um, it could, it, I used to do that, and then you could take that into a separate channel on your mixing desk and it gave you your vocal harmony as a separate volume and a separate control, which which was great. Uh, 
I could never get to use the uh, vocal harmonizer on my tires too because for some reason it just never worked right. Very difficult to set it up and I just never bothered with it. But um, that's just my uh, little video for today and uh, I'm going to be doing a few more videos on this. And I'm going to be fitting new hair drive when it comes and um, I'm going to show you how to format the drive, how to fit it, how to format it. And um, also, I wish you all the best to look as well out there, everybody. Um, the other thing as well, um, just before I go, what you can do is, I've got this caddy, because I'm, a, I'm an IT, I work in IT and building, building computers and all that, so I have a lot of this equipment. It's not necessary to have these things. I have this is for reading those drives. There's one for the newer drives as well. And I'm going to put the drive in here and I'm going to see can I read anything off the computer on it. So um, I'll let you know how I get on with that. So, so you can put that in there and then you can put your USB in and it's for reading the drives. So that's my little video for today. And uh, I wish you all the best to look out there and uh, keep playing music and so I'll see you all again next week. So that's my Tuesday night or my Tuesday talk for today. Bye.